Hi everyone, it's Peter D with Bear Bull Traders. I'm recording this video because on Friday in the chat we got into a discussion about uh, what studies people use, how they set up their platforms, what they look at during the day. So I thought I'd give you a quick view uh, as to how I set up my platform and what information I use. Now, this is like the third time I've tried to record this. I, it keeps being really too long, so I'm gonna try and keep this 10 minutes, but, but give you all the information. So if there's anything else you wanna know, feel free to enter comments below or reach out. I'd be happy to answer any questions. So let me start by showing you uh, my setup. So I've got two devices that I use. I use a desktop tower that has three 27 inch monitors on it and then a separate laptop. So starting with the desktop, it's my primary platform and what you can see here is the DAS information which is the most of the information that I look at during the day. Um, uh, starting at the far left uh, this is what I track so uh, this is my primary tracking um, area I keep the market indices here I keep some of the FANG and other stocks that I tend to just keep an eye on because I find that these move the market and I trade these themselves fairly often uh, then I've got a section for some of the Chinese stocks, just so I don't forget their symbol, and they tend to trade in similar patterns, so I keep them together. And then last, there's a section down here that's divided into three areas, which is my daily uh, tracking stocks. So first, uh, in this section here, uh, I tend to just put the ones that uh, were trending in previous days. So either the day before or two days ago, I just keep them on here to keep an eye and say, hey, if they're, they might be still moving and still in play, then I'd like to just keep a quick eye on them. This is where I put primarily all of the high float stocks, uh, which is what I mostly trade that I'm looking at during the day. Uh, I leverage earnings and news heavily, uh, like most people do, to figure out what's trending. And you can see this in my list from Friday. And then down below, I tend to put all the stocks that are low float that I keep an eye on. Now, Andrew plays low float a lot more than I do. Uh, I generally don't play a lot of low float, but occasionally I'll put one or two here that I just want, want to keep an eye on. And actually, I think on Friday, uh, maybe it was Thursday, I did trade MTSL, so I, I keep it on watch. Then in the screen, I've got two complete montage setups and just three tracking setups. Uh, so in here, I put the different stocks that I want to look at in the three tracking setups. And then things that I'm planning to actively trade, I put in the montage setups. Now, for me, uh, a montage setup consists of four basic windows. So I'll just try and put a really bad box around it here. You can tell I'm not an artist. Um, so the four things are a one or a five minute chart that I keep up here. So it's actually a one, two, or five, depending on the day. In the morning, it's a one minute chart. In the afternoon, I go to two or five because as things slow down, like Friday afternoon, for example, things slow down so much that frankly, I only found the five minute relevant. Uh, you know, the one minute had no information that was on most stocks because it was, everything was moving so slow. Then down below, I have five, 15, so five fifteen. Whoops, sorry, down here. Five fifteen or daily chart, and I flip between these to get information. So uh, I put all my levels on this bottom chart, um, and uh, I track my levels down here because I'll show you in a second. I track different things on the top chart. So. Um, I get my levels mostly from the daily chart. So here I have STT. So if I wanted to set levels, for example, I say, okay, well, here's, it looks like a strong level, right? Because it hit it a couple of times in the last few days. Um, I might zoom in here and say, all right, well, there's, there's some relevant levels up here that I want to keep an eye on, right? There's one. And then I, I put a marker often at where the key moving averages are, because once you change time frames, those moving averages disappear and you see the moving averages for the five minutes. So I'll lose the daily ones. Um, so speaking of the moving averages, on every one of my charts that you're going to see, I have all of the same information. So uh, previous day close is this dotted line. Let me just clear some lines here and we'll redraw things. So previous day's close. Um, then I've got a bunch of moving averages. Oh, sorry. The dotted lines here are similar to what Andrew does. So this is the previous two days high and low. And then I've color coded my moving averages because frankly, I found it difficult to uh, just keep straight what they all are sometimes, especially when stocks have had, you know, big down days after rising, you know, they, they, they get mixed. So what I've done is I've color coded them so I can keep an eye on them. So specifically, I use this light gray line and it is light on purpose because it's uh, what I consider the least relevant is the nine exponential moving average. 
uh, it just tracks the, the the action. I don't use it that much, except on th if things are on a heavy trend, I just watch to see when it crosses it, mostly to see when it's going to cross the next one, which is the green line, which is the 20 ex exponential moving average. I find that very relevant. I use it all the time, especially when you're on an active up or down trend. Uh, you'll notice it, 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 it tracks the action very directly, so I, I look for crosses. The 50 is the next one. The red one is the 50 uh, simple moving average. Again, that's more for entry and exit points. When it crosses that, I, it usually is a trend reversal or something larger is happening. And then I've got the 100 and the 200 simple moving average that I have in orange. Now, I keep those the same color because I find um, you know, it's easy. If they're both here, you, you know which is the 100 and which is the 200. If there's only one on the screen, it's going to be the 100 and the 200 is just off the chart. So, um, uh, and then I have the time and sales that I use just to see how fast things are moving and, and, and sort of how the, how the action is happening. Um, I'll talk about how I actively trade and use the montage in a second, but you know that's the setup that I use for everything that I'm actually looking to buy. I have a separate setup for each stock that I'm potentially looking to take a trade in because personally I find it easier than flipping back and forth between them. All right, on my center screen, um, Sorry, let's get to the center monitor. So on the center screen, I have three more montage windows and uh, another tracking box. Um, the difference for me is that on the middle screen, I tend to look at more of the tech stocks. I actually, you notice, keep a separate section here where I'm tracking the symbols for the semiconductor industry. So these are all semicon stocks that I look at, and then it's my daily tracking list as well. Um, it's linked to this center montage window, and uh, I find that I try and keep tech on the center one and uh, everything else basically on the left monitor just because I find they move slightly different and, and I, I mentally think about them differently in terms of how I enter a trade. Tech tends to uh, swing faster right, from high to low and I tend to scalp or move faster on those than, I, than the trend plays I may take on a lot of the other stuff. Um, that's a general rule but it doesn't apply in the first half hour of the markets. It really depends on the action and what's happening. Um, so this is you know, just again, three more tracking stocks. So I could actively trade five stocks at any given point. I rarely go above two or three, but I like to keep it there with that level of detail so that I, I could, if I, if I really found something compelling that I could get into. All right, the last monitor of my desktop setup um, is where I have everything else. Basically, I've run out of real estate. Eventually, I will expand to six monitors, but at this point, I've got three, and I feel I actually feel compressed. I'm surprised um, with three 27-inch that I feel compressed, but really, I don't have enough room for everything. So on here, um, I've got um, Micron and NVIDIA that tend to stay there because I just use them as, as barometers as to where the tech is going. Sometimes I'll flip this one to AMD or Intel, um, just to see you know so how that market's moving but I always keep these on the semiconductors uh, top list that we're all familiar with and then I actually have four windows up here that are the uh, the market indices so I can just see how they're moving um, now here in this section here I've got a bunch of overlapped windows that I've actively flipped between because again I'm sort of out of space and I've come up with a system where I everything is always visible in one corner so as long as I know where to click I can always find everything so uh, this is where I keep the bearable traders chat room I separate the chat window from this is normally Andrew's trading platform that I see with his, with his, uh, you know, what he shows us, including all of his scanners. So that goes in here. Back here, I have the news. Uh, in the news, uh, I look at a couple of primary sites. Finviz is where I get most of my news from. So anything I want to look up, uh, I go to Finviz. It gives me the active, uh, you know, news. Anything that I need to know. It also quickly tells me uh, the float. Um, the average, uh, the ATR, right? So how, how much does it tend to move during a course of a day and other key information that I get right off of here. Um, other sites that I use personally before market, so pre-market, I like to go to Stock Market Watch uh, because here they've got a really good list. Um, of stocks that are moving pre-market. So it's a quick visual for me to say, so what's up percentage-wise and what's the volume? And then I can go do some research. I will flip back here and say, okay, so you know this GOL, I don't know, it's moving. So I'll, I'll quickly go and I'll say, all right, so what is it doing or why is it moving? Right? And I say, okay, well, here's some news or here completed a sale of equity. Uh, it's uh, okay. It's not a low float. It's got 74 million float, um, but it's got a really low range. Probably not that interested in it. Um, 
Other things that I use is I have a couple of different sites I use to look at upcoming IPOs. So this just tells me what IPOs are coming so that I can track them. If there's some that I'm really interested in, I'll put them in an alert. Uh, and I'll show you my alerts in a second that I use to track it. Others, I just, just to know that they're there. Um, I think the last thing that I look at, um, I don't really have it up here, is the market hours. Um, you know, I'll, I guess I'll just usually search that if I want to know what the NASDAQ uh, market hours are. Um, it'll, you know, I just go to their site and figure out when they're open because so, I always forget which days they're open and which days they're closed. So, um, you know, this will quick, quickly tell me. Um, other things I do is I do actively track uh, the uh, how fast my platform is working. Obviously, it's great here on the weekend, but usually my quote server can slow down to about uh, anywhere from 70 to 200 milliseconds, I find. But so my order server is always around this range. So that's important to me because I do never don't ever want this to delay. The other thing that I put on here that I mentioned uh, briefly that I look at is the um, alerts and triggers. So I have the opening bell that rings for me a second before the market opens. Um, and then I, I like to track IPOs. The way I do it, just to give people reference, because it took me a bit of time to figure this out, you can set an alert in DAS and the alert and trigger where really I just you know I just name it IPO or IPO123. You put the, the symbol of the stock you're looking for in here. And then I do last sale over and above $1 all the time. So basically what it tells me as soon as the first trade occurs, the first share is traded, it'll give me an alert and say the thing's now active. It rings a bell. I, I can look and say, okay, so I know which one's active and I can go take a look. I don't often trade IPOs, but there is this fear of missing out that I've got all the time, so I keep it up there. The other, I mentioned I have a laptop. Now, I don't have my laptop set up here to show you, but I will show you one of the key windows. My laptop is where really I do all the non-trading related stuff for the most part, email and you know that stuff that we all track. But there is one important thing that I keep up there, and that's, that's this window here. And uh, this window is where I actively plug in my stocks so I can see, sorry, here we go. So I can actively see what it is that um, I need to trade. Now I trade a little bit differently than most people. Um, I trade uh, each trade different size based on my max loss for the trade. So for example, if my max loss, which on Friday was $100 per trade, I determine what I think a reasonable stop loss is based on how far I am from VWAP, where the next um, you know, next level is that I'd want to get to. And that's different depending on the motion of the stock. Sometimes it can be as high as a dollar or two dollars, right? When I'm trading like Tesla or if I'm trading Netflix. Other times it can be as low as 15 cents, which means I will very radically change change the number of shares that I'm trading because you know my max loss and then my daily profit are always matched. It's going to be the same on every single trade. So if my max loss is $100, I'm looking to make $250 target on the trade. So this is 2.5 times whatever my max loss or what my target loss in cents is, right? So this gives me a quick visual without having to think in the pressure of the markets to say, okay, let's say I'm trading Tesla and I say, okay, I think I need to put a buck 50 in here quickly. Okay, 70 shares is what it can take. So I will trade 70 shares. I know I'm looking for $3.75 profit out of, from the motion. And this gives me two important things. One, like I've mentioned, the number of shares I have to trade. But two, it also gives me the that instant reminder to say, okay, don't start taking profit too early. You got to wait for that. You're, you're trying to wait for it to either uh, hit your profit target or you hit your max loss and you know, you're know you down a buck 50 and you're out. So let me talk about then how I track and mark that. So um, I'll go back to my center screen here and I'll just uh, show you so the montage specifically. So what I look at here is I mentioned that I mark levels in the bottom one, so which I, which I do. Um, Sorry, I've got a window open here. I have to cancel. All right. So when I mark my levels, I'm just going to randomly put some levels in here. Um, these would be my, my trade levels, right, that I want to keep an eye on. In my top window, what I do is I will put wherever I buy in. So let's say I got into this stock at 44.05. I will put a level there just to say, okay, so this is my stop loss. Now, it tells me on my other windows, you know, what your stop loss is, but... Um, I like to mark it here so that I know um, exactly where my, my break even point. And then mentally I say, all right, so let's use the example I had. If I know that I've got to go a dollar fifty down below that, I know to keep an eye when I get down to that level that I have to get out. And I can also then count from that point and say, okay, I, want, I need three dollars and seventy five cents. So I'm looking for you know one forty seven eighty before I'm trying to take a partial. So. 
Um, I use I use markers on the top chart to understand where I am in a trade. Now, when I take a trade, uh, I also do it I think differently than a lot of people. Um, let me just set the template back here to the default. Um, I uh, I do not use hotkeys. I know a lot of people love and use hotkeys. I don't only because I find that um, I've made I made mistakes early on and I couldn't figure out which key was what. And rather than learning them or risk making the mistakes that tend to cost me money, I notice when Andrew makes a hotkey mistake, it tends to double his profit. For me, it costs me a lot of money. I want to take extra time to enter a trade and exit a trade. I believe that if I need a hotkey, I'm I'm taking too impulsive of a trade, and I don't want to do it. So, you know, if I in my example, if I want to set this to 70, I I either have to manually type in, or I can use the the keys to get there. But um, I, I purposely want to do that. I purposely want to hit the buy button to have to get there. Um, my sell buttons take half share off. So let me just show you what they say. So I've got. You know, you can pause it and see the script here. My scripts get me out either, uh, so this one will get me out half of a long. Uh, this one will get me, you know, buy back half of a short, and then this just gets me all out. So I use these buttons to enter and exit my trade uh, when I scale out because it, it makes me think about what I'm doing. Same thing with stops. You notice my window is set up without the stop information actively there. So if I want to set a stop, so and I want to buy, I have an extra window that pops up. I have to then manually pick whether it's a trailing stop, whether it's a range stop. I don't use market or limit very often, but but they're there uh, because I want to think about it, right? I only use these when I'm stepping away, and I want to have to say, okay, so what am I going? I'm going to set my stop. You know, here's my my target price at. I'm going to set my low price. Blah blah. Like I I really want to think about what I'm doing so that it, it's going to take me some time to set it up. That's my philosophy, but that's how I like to operate. The last thing I'll just mention is that you notice you didn't see my P&L anywhere on here. I do not have it on my screen. I had to learn this the hard way to take it off. I do look at my P&L on any open trades. I obviously look at any open um, uh, trades that I have. Uh, if I've put in a request and it's pending, uh, I have a window where that, that sits on my first screen. In fact, let me just go back. I'll, I'll show you that quickly. Um, so back on this monitor, uh, you can see So any open trades would sit here. Any pending orders that I would have would be in here. And this is just my trade history. I, I have that because sometimes if I take, uh, if I partial in, uh, you know, I get my average uh, price, but sometimes it's good to know, okay, so the last set of shares I bought were X or Y price. Uh, I like to know that, or where did I exit? Uh, it just gives me some quick information, but that's it. Over here are the windows where I actually have my P&L for the day and my net P&L, you notice that they're minimized so that I can't see them. I do not want to see what that P&L is on the day because while I've got targets for the day and, and total stop loss and total profit, I find generally I know where I am and I don't want to look at it because I find I start making trade decisions based on my P&L rather than what the technicals are telling me. And I've had to really steal myself over a long period of time to say, keep it closed, don't look at it. And I will go the entire day without ever opening that. It's only at the end of the day, or if I think I'm close to my max stop loss, that I will look at that. Now, I do not have an automatic setup to uh, force me to stop trading after I hit max. I find that I generally, again, if you don't know that you're close or on it, then you know I find that for me, that means I've got another problem and, uh, and I don't, uh, that I need to pay attention to. So the last thing I'll mention that I realize I didn't is I do have some studies down in this section of a chart. And let me just quickly do this so you can see it. Um, back down in the volume area, it's not just volume. I also plot this gray line here. Um, this gray line is the um, sorry is the um, the average volume over the last 20 periods. So if it's on a daily chart, it'll be the last 20 days. If it's on a five-minute chart, it'll be the last 100 minutes. But it just gives me an idea of is the current volume trending above or below the average. And I find that useful when I'm trying to enter a trade. And I like to know is volume not only is volume increasing, but how does it look compared to the average volume? And then this is an RSI 14. Uh, I don't use it that often, but um, I do uh, use it to tell me when things are an overbought or oversold situation. So that's my platform. Uh, hopefully that gives you an idea of some of the information that I use. And if you have any questions, I said happy to take them. And hopefully you found this helpful. Happy trading, everybody.